So we're just going to talk about summer reads. Michael alluded to this yesterday. We practiced it, and it took like an hour and a half. So we're going to try and do better. Um, you can just leave if you need to, but that's all right. So summer reads, I'll try and go quickly through here. We'll share this presentation. This has all of our social media links at the bottom. Notice we have a summer reading site for all of secondary schools, LSR7. Um, there's a page for middle school and the high school. And there we're hosting book talks by teachers and librarians. We have three teacher book talks so far. As always, we would like to have more than best or at least some high school. So if you could add a book talk, uh, please do that. And we'll share that through that page. And post throughout the summer. We're going to add our, our social media, our summer reading program, which we're partnering with Poppies um, for free ice cream for students who participate in that. So that's cool. Also, book talks on YouTube. Check those out. We want to promote our library. We have a lot of great resources, we feel. Um, also, I should say, while we're going to talk about Mid-Continent and Kansas City Public, uh, they're so big, they have a lot more resources, but they're also so big, they have a lot bigger lines. So if you see a book, um, maybe check at Mid-Continent, and if you're 53 in line, then go to our library, um, you know, Overdrive or Flipster, and you, you'll probably be first or second in line. Uh, so definitely, we would love for you to use our source resources. Check those out if you have questions on how to use them, as always, email us. Uh, I wanted to mention, we wanted to mention Mid-Continent and Kansas City Public. All of you can get a Mid-Continent and Kansas City Public Library card. There's links in the upper right-hand corner um, to their websites. It used to be in the upper right-hand corner. You just hit get a library card and you fill out the form and immediately you get a digital card, which you can use right then. And then they mail you the physical card. Also, there's links to their digital library because they have tons of resources, obviously, that you don't have to go physically to the library. Uh, we've listed a few of those. I'm not going to talk through them all. Overdrive has Libby for public, Sora for schools now for their apps. They also offer movies. So Overdrive, I think Midcontinent alone has about 80,000 eBooks and audiobooks on Overdrive. So that's awesome. Uh, there's lots of magazines. Hoopla, if you haven't looked at that before, it is appropriately named because it's just a smorgasbord of stuff. There's comics, there's magazines, there's e-music or streaming music, there's movies, all sorts of things. Uh, I would also mention Freegal. Uh, Mr. Russell and I, Michael and I, both like to actually own our music. Old school, not like Spotify or Apple Music where you just download it, but as soon as you stop paying, it's gone. So it's old school, like iTunes, you get to download five free songs a week and you own them. Um, so that's good if you're working on a project that you actually need to put music uh, in a video or something like that. So that's Freegal. You actually get to download and own music. And then Linda, I wanted to mention because those are online courses, especially for digital skills, which are, <clears throat> and they just got bought out by LinkedIn. So if you do a course and earn some sort of certification, it gets put into your LinkedIn profile and resume, which is kind of interesting. I don't know how I feel about it, but it's kind of interesting. Um, accessing books, uh, besides Mid-Continent, Kansas City Public, our library, all great sources of material. Um, Overdrive offers free summer reading each summer. They have 11 books for middle school and high school students that through every library, um, students can, anyone can access, unlimited access to them all summer. So there's a link to that. Uh, that's on our Overdrive and Mid-Continents and Kansas City Public. And then Audiophile um, is a different company that offers audiobooks each summer. They offer two free audiobooks each week. And this summer, it's much more convenient because they used to have their own website and you had to go there and register. Um, you still have to go there and put your email in, but then you can add it to Sora, uh, to Overdrive, and access it there. So it's really convenient. And once you check out the book, I checked one out yesterday, you have it for 36,000 days, so roughly 98.5 years. I don't know why, but you do. So those are all the different ways to access books. Uh, for free. And there are a lot of other ways that we didn't mention. Uh, Apple Books is giving away free books, Audible by Amazon, uh, lots of books right now, which is kind of cool. Um, PD opportunities. So Dr. Meisenheimer and uh, Ms. Minks sending out that awesome uh, opportunity, a free book. That's just Michael and I were so, you know, it's us. We're excited about free books. Um, and one of the things that was mentioned, if you want a free professional development book or if you want to order one of those, Rather than list professional development books, because we're all teaching different content, I thought I would list some of our favorite journals in the library office. So educational leadership, um, teaching tolerance, which is awesome. And this uh, month's issue is about young adult literature. Uh, and then school library journal. Uh, we know that 
we're the only librarians, uh, but at the same time, they're offering their digital, digital content for free, and half of every school library journal is book reviews. That's probably not surprising. So if you go to any of those websites and type in professional development books, you're going to get good book reviews about professional development books on every content area. So you might find uh, the book you're looking for through one of those websites. Also, these are just great uh, journals to look through uh, anytime. So those are some of our, our favorites. Okay, we're getting into the books now, so I'm going to turn it over to Michael. Man. Thank you very much. Nonfiction books. Um, Nathan and I both, I think, love talking about books. So I, I'm, I made some notes just to keep it brief because I could just go on and on. And I, I do tend to go on and on with books. So first one, Fascism, A Warning by Madeleine Albright. She was, of course, Secretary of State under Bill Clinton. She writes about her family history with fascism during World War II and her concern for modern fascism uh, in politics these days. But considering that she was a democratic president's secretary of state and her views are different than our current presidents uh the book is surprisingly diplomatic as a diplomat i guess it's not that surprising but uh a good read digital minimalism uh choosing a focused life in a noisy world by cal newport mary lee potostic did a great book talk from home on this that is on our youtube page the book is uh, by dr newport who is a computer science professor at georgetown basically has two sections. What is digital minimalism? How to live life without relying on this? And then also, you know, can't really survive without it. So how do you choose what is most appropriate uh, to serve you in the best way? Funny You Don't Look Autistic by Michael McCreary is a short, funny read. This was a um, community read on Sora during April. McCreary is Canadian. He's a comedian. He's 22. And he has autism. Uh, he talks about living with autism, how his brand of autism poses challenges for himself, also about how autism has helped him. He's built a comedy career around his experiences with autism. It is very short. It's an autobiography. He's only 22, so he doesn't have that much to say. Uh, but it is a funny uh, laugh out loud at times book. Uh, Things That Make White People Uncomfortable by Michael Bennett. This is my favorite book of those uh, new books that we're talking about on this page. Basically, it is a manifesto uh, of race in America, partially told through the lens of college and professional sports. He is a Pro Bowl football player. He gives you the perspective uh, from his point of view. I think my favorite quote from the book is he says, I will play football for a few more years, but I will be a black man in America for the rest of my life. Uh, he is highly critical of the NCAA not paying athletes, uh, calls the NFL draft and the player combine slave auctions, uh, offers some perspectives that some are funny, some are profound, some are rather profane. Uh, and on that note, there are two versions of this. There's the adult version, and then there's a more toned down, appropriate young adult version uh, so that if you read it and want to talk about it with kids, uh, give them the young adult version. But I think it is fantastic for continuing the conversation about race in America. And obviously the news, even within the last 16 hours, shows that we could probably... Uh, stand for a little more conversation about that. Evicted by Matthew Desmond, he is an investigative journalist, spends time with slumlords in Milwaukee, uh, dives into records uh, about residential uh, institutions, also focuses on other cities, focuses on Milwaukee, but mentions other cities like Kansas City. Um, landlords make more money off of renting to lower income people than any other segments, and evictions basically become a big business. So you get narratives from landlords and from tenants a uh, very interesting nonfiction book. I will quickly mention the five books on the side are all fantastic. We have talked about them in the past, as well as one book on the next slide on the adult bestsellers, fiction bestsellers. We did such a great job talking about those six books. They are still on the New York Times bestseller list. So go us, we'll check those out. And uh, Nathan has four more uh, nonfiction books here on this slide. Um, I also mentioned I, when we share this presentation, I link these to searches within Midcontinent so you can find the audio and ebook and some related books to them because I knew it, it was kind of hard to see some of the covers. So Washington, uh, Making of the American Capital, I think I read in January or February. I mentioned it because it, in 1793, Philadelphia experienced a yellow fever where 10 percent of their population died. And they talk about it in this book. And it really was one of the reasons where the capital, which they were kind of skeptical would ever move to what would be Washington, D.C. They thought it would stay in Philadelphia, 
uh, kind of precipitated the, the, the moving of it. Um, so it has a lot of interesting parallels um, to all sorts of things today. So it was a pretty interesting read. Fiasco is about uh, 2003 to 2006 in the Iraq war and the fiasco um, that it was. American Amnesia um, is about kind of progressive politics. I read it um, last fall and I thought it was really good. Uh, I really want to encourage you to look into The Life You Can Save by Peter Singer. Um, he apparently is like the most influential philosopher in the world. I'd never heard of the guy, but he influenced the, the producer of The Good Place and uh, The Office and Parks and Rec. Um, and so his philosophy shows up a lot in, in those shows, apparently. Um, you can, it was such an influential book. This rich person basically bought out the rights. And now uh, Peter Singer and this guy are giving it away for free. So you can download the book for free. You can download the audio book for free. They have a lot of resources on their website. Um, and I think it would be really good to use in class. They're short chapters that really um, just create great discussions. So his famous thought experiment is if you were walking through a park and you saw a kid drowning in a pond, would you think about the value of your clothes? Like, oh, I don't want to ruin my $100 shoes or my, you know, my suit. Uh, no, you would save the life of the child. But he, his argument is that we make that decision every day. Every time we buy a hundred or two hundred dollar shoes, we're prioritizing our shoes over the lives of other people. So it's really difficult to think about and to grapple with. And I think it would lead to a lot of great conversations. And it's free, uh, the audiobook and the ebook. So that's the life you can save. And the next ones, if I can get this to work, are. Adult fiction. This is adult fiction. Okay. I will talk a little longer about the adult books than we will some of the young adult books to come just because we're adults and um, reading YA is great, but it's also good to read uh, some great adult fiction. So the first two on the top left, uh, both by Colson Whitehead, both won Pulitzer Prizes. Uh, Nickel Boys, top left, just won the Pulitzer earlier this week for fiction, uh, named one of Time Magazine's best 10 novels of the decade. Based on a true story, uh, Whitehead renamed the Academy in Florida the Nickel Academy. It wasn't the original name. Uh, it is a reform school for boys in the last days of the Jim Crow era. White and black teen boys were housed separately. They were treated very differently. Black boys were taken from their beds, beaten, sometimes raped, sometimes killed, and buried in unmarked graves on the grounds. Uh, the novel follows two black teens from the Nickel Academy, uh, told in two time frames. It starts in present day, then flashes back uh, to that era while they are teens in the Academy. You can read it quickly. I read it on Wednesday uh, when I found out that it had won the Pulitzer Prize. It had been on my list for a long time. Uh, but it, even though you can read it quickly, it, it will haunt you. It, it will stick with you. Underground Railroad. Uh, won the Pulitzer in 2017, so Whitehead might be the first author to win on back-to-back -back books. It wasn't back-to-back -back years, but back-to-back -back releases. Uh, this was not real new. It's used by junior IB classes here at Lee Summit North. Um, many of us, when we were kids, you know, we heard about the Underground Railroad and pictured a literal railroad underground. Whitehead kind of plays with that theme on um, slaves escaping the South in antebellum America. Uh, I actually liked Underground Railroad better than Nickel Boys, but they are both fantastic, both deserving of praise. Water dancer ta Coates, in my opinion, ta Coates is America's greatest living essayist. He wrote, Between the World and Me, We Were Eight Years in Power. This is his first novel. Uh, it is also about the Underground Railroad, but with more magical realism. Hiram Walker is the main character. He was born a slave, but has these magical powers he can't quite grasp or figure out how to use. Then Moses comes in, Harriet Tubman, uh, Moses of the Underground Railroad. Uh, she plays a significant cameo role in the novel, and basically it's about this struggle for freedom for all by a man who can't even free his own family. American Dirt by Janine Cummins, I just finished earlier this week, and I'm still kind of figuring out whether I really liked it or not. I uh, got a ton of press, um, not necessarily all good press. It is the story of a mother, Lydia, and her eight-year-old son, Luca. Lydia owned a bookshop in southwest Mexico, and without knowing it, she became friends and flirted openly with Javier, who turned out to be the new boss of a violent cartel. They would leave people's decapitated heads around town as messages. Uh, the book opens at a quinceanera where 16 members of Lydia and Lucas's family have just been murdered. 
uh, by the cartel. So Lydia and Luca try to escape Acapulco to get to the United States any way they can, by bus, by uh, train, and, uh, and on foot. The thing I liked about it was it really puts a human face on those stories of immigrants coming to America. The problematic side of this book is a lot of Latinx authors have expressed claims of cultural appropriation because the author is white, she lives in New York City, and there were some publishing missteps uh, when it was first published. If you read it, I would be really interested to talk to you because like I said, I'm still struggling with whether I actually liked it. Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. Uh, it's streaming now on Hulu, small town, life turned upside down when somebody new moves to town. Bear Town, Frederick Bachman. Uh, he also wrote the book, A Man Called Uwe. Uh, this is the first of a trilogy. Books one and two are out. Uh, book one honestly feels like it could just stand alone on its own. Uh, this is about a small Nordic town that is obsessed with hockey, uh, but it could be an American town obsessed with football or basketball, anything like that. It uh, could also be a, a young adult novel because there's two primary characters, a young man, uh, high school aged, who is the hockey star with the future in the NHL. He rapes the teen daughter of the team's general manager. So you get perspectives from all the characters, including parents. Uh, I would call it a suspenseful character study in human nature. One of my favorites uh, from the suspense mystical realm, Stephen King, The Institute. The thing I like most about this, if you like King's original work, um, Carrie, Firestarter, where he talks about telekinesis, he kind of circles back to that original writing. Uh, also brings in elements of uh, Stranger Things from Netflix, where they kind of paid homage to his original work. So it's basically uh, a book about a young boy who gets kidnapped by this secret government agency. The, the boy gets all these tests run on him, and then he hatches a plot to try to escape to save everybody else in the in the facility. Uh, easy, fun murder mysteries. Just great beach reads that you don't have to think too much about. Uh, murder in an Irish Village is a series by Carleen O'Connor. Siobhan O'Sullivan uh, is 22. A terrible Irish accent there, sorry. Uh, they live in the Irish Village of Kilbane. She's raising her five siblings after their parents died about a year ago. Uh, one morning they're opening up the bistro and they find a man slumped over, I think, with a pair of scissors in his back. And she, of course, decides she's going to, to investigate because the police, there, there aren't really police around. There are sequels, uh, Murder in an Irish Churchyard, an Irish Wedding, an Irish Pub, and an Irish Christmas. They're, they're, they're just a lot of fun. And let's see, uh, Where the Crawdads Sing uh, is another one we talked about last year. Still, it's like the 84th week on the New York Times bestseller list. And Bill, oh. I had one on there, but it, it sounds so much like a PBS mystery, they turned it into a PBS mystery, so it was good. Um, Gateway, so these are the nominees for next year. Uh, we're going a little bit longer than a normal Food Friday, so whatever you need to do is great. Uh, we just can't stop talking about books. So Gateway nominees, this is a really good list for next year. The Poet X is a novel in verse. Michael and I both love it, but it's not plot driven, it's all character driven, so it's difficult to talk about it. Just read it. Someone I used to know by Patty Blount. Um, this one takes place in sports obsessed town. It's two main characters, Ashley and Derek, their brother and sister. And when Ashley is a freshman in high school, she is raped by a football player and a friend of Derek. Derek does not support his sister as he should. So this the story takes place two years later when Ashley is going back to school in her junior year. Derek is off at college and they both need to heal, obviously, and their relationship needs to heal. So it covers that. A Heart and a Body in the World. I just finished this. Um, Annabelle main character is 17. She lives in Seattle. She's just gotten fast food, but rather than get in her car and drive home, she just starts running. Uh, she runs 11 miles that night, calls mom at home and says, mom, I'm not coming home. You know that appointment I have in DC five months from now? I'm just gonna run there. So throughout the book, um, you find out what's happened to her, the tragedy, her relationships as she runs across the United States. Uh, I love that book and I read it uh, real quick, which I'm not a fast reader. I'm going to skip down, just talk about two more. Um, After the Shot Drops by uh, Randy Rib, uh, Ribeye um, is two main characters. It alternates back and forth. Bunny, it's called Bunny because he has hops. He's an amazing basketball player. Think LeBron James in high school. Uh, they live in New York City, they're best friends. And Bunny gets a scholarship to a private school. Think Rockhurst, but even worse and wealthier. Um, so he takes it because he wants the opportunity 
uh, for himself and his family. Nasir is upset because he feels like his best friend has abandoned him. Uh, not because he took the scholarship, he understands that, but because he didn't talk to him about it. So the rest of the story is about that next basketball season and about their relationship and about their community and families as they kind of deal with all of the issues uh, that come up. And that was a good book. Uh, Dry, I mentioned that. that. That book really frustrated me. It's by Neil Schusterman, who our students really like. But it takes place in Southern California in the near future. And the drought has gotten even worse. And then the governors of Arizona and Nevada and Colorado decide to shut off access to the, um, what am I thinking, Colorado River to Southern California. So they run out of water. Uh, so it follows um, Lissa and her little brother um, uh, through two weeks as there's no water in Southern California and kind of craziness ensues. Uh, it was really difficult and just uncomfortable to read, especially as a parent, because you're like, how would I take care of my kids? And one of our library assistants started reading it right before uh, the coronavirus pandemic. And she emailed us and said, I had to stop reading this because it was just too much during this time. So it's pretty intense. It, you get through it fast. Um, so those are the four that I'm, I'm going to talk about. I will mention real briefly um, uh, some of the others. Little White Lies is basically a tomboy, becomes a Southern Belle. Cruel Prince is a fantasy like Game of Thrones, but with fairies. Dread Nation is one of my favorites on this list. It is revisionist history with modern political satire. Absolutely loved that one. There is a sequel. Mental health is a big thing that is coming um, in a lot of new books. Uh, Monday's Not Coming is one of those. Tiffany D. Jackson is fantastic. Hey Kiddo is a graphic novel uh, that kids who have an unstable home life will probably relate to. Unfortunates is a suspense novel. Uh, the worst cover in years. Uh, the cover looks like it has absolutely nothing to do with what the book is actually about. Flight Season is a uh, lovely romantic comedy tragedy uh, that made me cry. Camp Valor, the kids love it. Picture a Steven Seagal film about military camps, but as a young adult novel. It's terrible, but the kids love it. Uh, Neanderthal set in uh, Montana. Both Nathan and I love that one. Uh, he talked about shot drops, dry. Book of Essie, also a lot of kids are really checking that one out. It is about uh, a young woman born into the spotlight her father is a famous evangelical TV preacher with a reality TV show. So she's grown up in the spotlight. She is 16. She's now pregnant and desperately wants to get out of the family situation and is willing to leverage that pregnancy uh, to win her freedom. So a lot of kids have been checking that one out. I suspect we'll get a lot of traction on Book of Essie. Book Club Books. Um, this kind of more over on the right side there, the Schoology Join Code. Um, if kids read three or more Gateway books and on our Schoology page, there are 10 easy questions, uh, they're quizzes, they have 10 questions um, that shows us that they read them. Three or more, they get invited to our voting party, all 15, they get a patch for their letter jacket. You are also, we would love to have you as part of our, our book club. Uh, these are some of the titles that we're reading next year. Uh, just real quickly, Turn of the Key is a modern murder mystery set in the Scottish Highlands in a smart house where everything is run by a computer. You know, what could possibly go wrong? Murder mystery. Uh, Grace Year, Suspense, basically it's Lord of the Flies meets The Handmaid's Tale with some Hunger Games thrown in. Girls with Sharp Sticks is Suspense Mystery. Handmaid's Tale meets Westworld, Patron Saints of Nothing. High School Senior goes to the Philippines to investigate his cousin's murder discover something about himself. Yes, no, maybe so. Great book for an election year. Two kids uh, who used to know each other as toddlers get back together to work on a Democratic state senator's campaign in the deep red state of Georgia. Heroin is a realistic cautionary tale. A high school softball player in her junior year gets hurt badly in a car crash, desperate to get the Division I scholarship. Her senior year, she starts pushing it a little too hard takes Oxy to ease the pain, gets hooked, then devolves into heroin. American Royals, great beach read. Basically, it's a modern story. Twist is George Washington, back in the day, didn't become our first president. He became our first king. And now his descendants are our royalty and two females, great, 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 great granddaughters are in line for the, 
the crown for the first time. Speak and Shout, Lori Hulse Anderson. Um, Speak is, of course, the classic book about a, a girl who gets raped in high school and doesn't speak about it. Shout is Lori Hulse Anderson's uh, book in verse, a biography in verse about her experience writing that and meeting young women as well as men uh, who had been sexually abused uh, and those experiences. Past Perfect Life might be a book club book uh, if we have time for it. It is about a young woman basically doing everything that our seniors do and then discovers that everything about her life has been a lie up to this point. So kind of a thriller. So those are book club books. Real quickly, um, hot new YA books, pretend she's here. Uh, a young woman, <laughs> her best friend is killed, uh, dies, and then her parents, Lizzie's parents, come back uh, and steal the best friend and say, you're going to be our new Lizzie. It's creepy. It's weird. You yell at the book. Let Me Hear a Rhyme by Tiffany D. Jackson. Loved this one because it's set, I hate to call this a historical novel because it's set in 1997, but that was 22 23 years ago now, so it's technically a historical novel. But in New York City, uh, lots of references to that golden era of hip hop. So Tupac, Biggie, Lauren Hill, Queen Latifah, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, the list goes on and on. It's, it's fantastic. I think our kids will love that. Um, Kingdom of Back is about Mozart and his sister as little kids making up fairy tales about this kingdom and uh, the kingdom comes to life. Frankly in Love is the best thing I can say about this. It's a great book. Uh, David Yoon's wife, Nicola, wrote Everything, Everything, and The Sun is Also a Star. So I think that will be very popular with kids. It's a romantic comedy, Fountains of Silence, historical fiction about Generalissimo Franco in Spain. Cursed is a prequel to the Arthurian legend, which is a lot of fun and will be on Netflix. Netflix bought the rights before it was published, uh, I think in early 2021. Uh, the rare, funny YA book, Field Guide to the North American Teenager, main character is Canadian, speaks French, and he's black, and he moves to Austin, Texas, where none of those things are, are working out for him. The very funny one-liners. Let's Go Swimming on Doomsday, suspense novel about a terror cell in Mogadishu and a young man trapped by the American CIA and the terror cell. Darius the Great is not okay. Young man goes to Iran to visit his grandparents for the first time, kind of discovers himself in a homeland he didn't know he had. And new David Espinosa, young man is really scrawny, is bullied. Uh, this bullying incident goes viral on YouTube. He decides he's going to bulk up over the summer by taking steroids and it doesn't end well for him. So I think there'll be popular books next year on the young adult realm. And the, the Darius, the great one, the author is from Kansas City. So kids have a lot of to hear him speak. <coughs> Michael, I think this one's the, yeah. Yes, last one I'll talk about. Um, you know, I think we're on what day eighty-seven or day day three of quarantine. I, I, time is is funky, but you might want to get away a little bit um, with some sound. You know, you can't necessarily go to the beach to read, but maybe you can plug in a beach, uh, and that will help. So these are four links to different things. Missing sounds of New York City. This week, the New York City Public Library released this album of sounds of what New York was before quarantine. So it's traffic, it's Yankee Stadium, it's the New York City Public Library, which of course is not quiet. Uh, there's also Oxford libraries, um, beaches in nature. So if you want birds chirping or uh, beach sounds. And then Hogwarts sound mixer is kind of fun because it's got the Hogwarts library, the Gryffindor common room, and you can kind of mix the different elements much like uh, the app Noisly, which is uh, also a lot of fun. Uh, Michael's going to get the um, kahoot ready if you want to stick around for that. We just wanted to mention Broncos Read. We've had about 22 people sign up for that. Michael and I pick books this week, so we'll be emailing you soon if you ask us to put, pick the books for you. If you haven't signed up, please do so. That's the thing where we're going to put on your door next year what you read over the summer, and then your the goal is to get as many kids to read the same book as you did as possible. So hopefully you got some ideas from our book talks. You can choose some of these, um, but that sign up is there on that link. And then again, thank you, Dr. Meisenheimer and Ms. Davis and Ms. Minx, who are coordinating the free book for everyone. That's fantastic. I put a link to that there. I think uh, Leslie sent out a reminder this morning for those of us who haven't chosen yet. I haven't chosen yet, having trouble choosing. Uh, so thank you again for that. And the winner, JP. In third place.
Walker in second. And RBK. Ryan Kelly, ladies and gentlemen, pulling it out. All right. There we go. Mr. Miller, any thoughts? Thank you for coming to listen to us talk about books. If you have any questions or anything or email us, I love hearing from people. It's amazing how much an email from somebody makes me happy right now. It's like, oh, somebody's talking to me. So hope everybody's doing well. Let us know if we can help you in any way. We're, we're still around.